it is unknown when he was first discovered and when a cup of real coffee was first drunk. There are many different legends, but there is no written source or evidence of the use of coffee in the early Middle Ages. The most common myth is the Stepford Kaldi. One night in East Africa, while looking at his animals on a mountain side, he noticed that his animals were behaving strangely. When he examined it, he decided that they ate the red berries near the bushes. As a result, they stayed awake all night. Even the old gods were hopping around. Curiously, the goat herd gathered and tested some of the fruit. He found that this strengthened him and kept him more alert. Meanwhile, a monk was passing the near monastery. The shepherd told him about the gods, and the monk asked him to show him this plant, and Kaldi monk with greyish bark and glossy leaves on its thin branches. On the underside of the leaves, mixed with a small white flower bunch, some green, the more mature one yellow, and the others cherry colored with fruit clusters that have reached fully motory with their size, shape, showed a small, beautiful bush. Wanting to test the effect of these fruits, the monk crushed some of them into powder and poured boiling water over him to make drink. This was the first cup of coffee, but it didn't last long. However, the coffee was roasted for the first time. The effect of drink made him fully awake but didn't affect his mental abilities. Coffee then split from the monastery to monastery, making it more desirable and considered a divine gift brought to believers by angels from heaven. This legend is probably of European origin as there is no similar story in the Arabic coffee tradition or legend. The other generally accepted story about the spirit of coffee in Vienna dates back to the siege of Vienna. The legendary story of Vienna's coffee sprouts with the siege of 1683. It is August and the Habsburg capital is under heavy Turkish siege. The laws of the city would put Europeans at risk. In addition to troops defending the city under the leadership of Count Ernst Rudiger von Sternberg, the timely arrival of an army commanded by Polish King Jan III Sobieski changed to the fate of Vienna and the Ottoman Empire army retreats on 12 September 1683. The hero of the coffee story, George Franz Kolchinski, served his country as a surveillance agent during the siege due to the knowledge of the Ottoman language as customs. It is estimated that his familiarity with the Ottoman culture came from his visits to the East in the past years. His work as an interpreter or some military duties. During the war, due to the contributions to the defense, he aspired to the bags of camel fodder, armor, weapons, tents, and war equipment left behind by the Ottoman army, and this request was accepted. Inside the bags, which are supposed to be filled with camel, camel fodder, are 500 kilograms of green coffee beans, which Kolchinsky learned about its properties and methods such as roasting grinding and boiling during his travels to the east. Using the coffee beans left behind, Kolchinsky opened the first coffee house in Vienna with the name of House Under the Blue Bottle. However, the demand for coffee is low. Therefore, he considers using integrations such as sugar, 
me honey to break the bitter taste of coffee that is boiled with large amounts of the coffee and served with its ground. After these innovations, coffee in Vienna regains its popularity that we never lose. Coffee was introduced as a beverage to the North American colonies by the British in the 17th century. According to the first source, coffee has been drunk in North America since 1668 and the coffee houses were opened in New York, Philadelphia, Boston and other cities. The Boston Tea Party of 1773 was held in coffee house called the Green Dragon. At the same time, the modern day financial area known as the Wall Street, the New York Stock Exchange and the New York Bank began in coffee houses. Thanks to the brand new preparation method invented by the Turks, coffee was cooked in a coffee pot and took the name Turkish coffee. Thanks to the coffee houses that spread throughout the city over time. The public became acquainted with coffee. Coffee culture that left its mark on social life of the period. In a short time, the taste and fame of Turkish coffee first spread to Europe and then to the whole world. Thanks to both the travelers who came to Istanbul and the Ottoman ambassadors. It is the oldest coffee brewing method in the world. Form consists of coffee and grounds. Thanks to this delicious form, which can stay in shape for a few minutes, it can stay hot for a long time. Since it is served in a thin rimmed cup, it cools down more slowly than other types of coffee, thus providing a longer lasting coffee enjoyment. Compared to other types of coffee, it is more vicious, soft and aromatic.